Okay, this time we're going to use uh, similar arguments to last time uh, to derive the second equation. Uh, the big difference between this and the first one is that the acceleration value is actually used in this one. Uh, we start with the same base setup, and we've got uh, V here, and we've got U here. We've got a triangle, we've got a rectangle. Uh, again, we're talking about S, so the S, the distance that you travel, or the change of position if you're talking a vector, uh, will be equal to two parts. The lower part, which is a rectangle, U times T, plus the upper part, which is uh, the height, one half of the height, which is V minus U, uh, times a T. <coughs> now we want to get an acceleration involved in this, so we're going to use the base definition of acceleration, which is really the slope of the line that is trending upward. Uh, that's change in velocity V minus U over T. Now I've got V minus U right here, and I'm going to replace that by what this is equal to. So uh, if I multiply both sides by T, I can say that V minus U is equal to A times T. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to replace it in here where the V minus U is. Now we can rewrite and come up with the equation. So S equals UT plus one half of AT times T. And that's the same as saying UT plus one half of the acceleration times the time squared. And that is exactly what we have up here and is in the data booklet. Uh, now let's check units to make sure that this will work out. Uh, U is going to be in the units of meters. T is going to be in the units of second to the minus one. So we multiply them together, that's what we have. Um, all right, seconds to the minus one times seconds. So the seconds are going to go away. And then here we're going to have uh, meters second minus two is the unit of acceleration, and we're going to multiply that by second squared. So those go away, and we're going to have meters. We're adding meters to meters. That's going to give us S in meters. So that works. Uh, so again, if you're trying to figure out where you're located, and you started out already moving, we can take how far you would have gone before you accelerated and we can add or subtract to it uh, any effects of acceleration. Okay, so that'll uh, give us an idea of how we can uh, measure how far we've traveled when we are increasing or decreasing our speed. Again, uh, if you increase the speed, you should see a farther distance. If you decrease the speed while moving in the negative direction, a positive direction, you should see a decrease in the overall distance traveled compared to what it would have been uh, before. So, uh, handy equation. Again, velocity time graphs show you a lot. They're the best, most efficient way to attack kinematics problems uh, when you're trying to figure out how far, how fast, or rates of acceleration.